Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today I've got a special treat for you, a Let's Play of Distant Worlds 2. So this game just released today on March 10th, 2022, Year of Our Lord, uh, and I said, well, I always just live stream warn these two, why don't we try something different? uh check it out see how it goes now i sorry i'm a few minutes late because i was trying to figure out exactly where to put my head and uh, you see me floating over a uh I, I guess i'm like snoke out here um i'm floating out over this planet and one problem is a it's a full screen game so i might not be able to get to the comments quite as often as i do usually but we'll see we'll see hey john chapel how are you um john says it took an hour to download the game this morning huge demand i would expect so this is a beloved game distant worlds universe was and this one they've taken all of the best now i will say that eric Reitens, or i think it's Ro Reitens or Reitens. i'm not sure on that one he was kind of the lead uh, shepherd over at Matrix, and whenever he's involved, it's their big games. And so he did warn these two. He's done several of their other really good games. And so, uh, you know, I would suspect this is very well done. And what we've played of it, the preview, the Let's Play tutorial, it seems fantastic and perfect. If anything, it's almost a little too automated, or it can be too automated, but we're going to try to solve that as we go through here and um, run our empire. And we are going to be space gerbils. We're going to be the little rodents. Now, a lot of people play Actarians. They play humans. Some people like the warfare, so they play the Mordelans. Uh, we're going to play the little, I call them gerbils. I don't know. They're they're a unnamed rodent. Uh, and they're good miners, and so we're going to try to build up a really good big economy uh, and trade and, and and try to get some good allies that can fight our wars for us. Uh, Jared, hey, how's it going, Jared? Yes, you have the dojo. Now that you're a member, you've got the dojo logo. I like it. I like it. Um, hey, Dred, what's going on? Yeah, I was sorry. I was about 10 or 12 minutes late there. I, I just... This stream's a little bit different than War in the East, uh, and so I couldn't quite figure out the best way to get it on the screen. Uh, but hopefully, if my head is in the way, we'll figure that out very quickly, and I'll move my head somewhere else, uh, certainly. Hey, Jim, how are you? Um, okay, well, let's get going, because we've got a lot to do. We're going to set this up. I'm going to try to play it at one time speed normal speed we're going to play on hard difficulty i've already said we're going to play teakin so we're going to look through that and see uh uh truth what's up oh yes here i am here i am truth uh good to see you my friend okay let's start a new game and i think what we'll do here is we'll keep the spiral galaxy that's fine. I, I generally like to play Spiral Galaxies. Uh, the other ones, you know, if you want some variety eventually, but starting out, Spiral Galaxy, we're just going to do 700 stars. I don't want it to be too big or too small. I want to give a nice representative sample of what the game's about. Uh, nebula density, so how many roadblocks are out there in our galaxy. We're going to keep that normal. And the galaxy size, we'll do 6x6 six six, uh, and keep all of this default, okay? Um, we're going to start pre-warp. We're going to start tech level pre-warp. I like to go right from the start. I know it's a little slow that very first, uh, you know, couple of years until you get warp, but I kind of like that. It lets you settle in, lets you look around your uh, very immediate area, set up, you know, your home base or moon, um, and so I like that. Uh, the galaxy is restless, and I do like restless difficulty hard. We're going to keep that the same. Research speed normal. I like that. Visibility only next projects and random research paths. I love all of that. We are going to allow tech trading because that's going to be a, a decent part of our strategy uh, because the Actarians, of course, are going to be researching a lot faster than we are. But we're going to hopefully, anyway, have a lot more resources because we're uh, the little mining guys. Pirates, normal. Pirate strength, normal. Pirate proximity, average. All of that is average. Uh, pirates respond, no. I like when they stay dead. And we will have space creatures on normal. 
Let's hope we don't run into any. Uh, colony prevalence, normal. Independent, normal. Influence range, default. Colony range limit, default. Okay, this has all been easy so far. And there they are, our little three-eyed space uh, gerbils. They look great. They got, they got the tech. Look at that backpack. That looks great. Tekans are small, furry, rodent-like race with three eyes. They see no value in washing regularly and then t thus tend to smell. <laughs> I love it. Tekans take special interest in hoarding all kinds of mechanical junk, disassembling and repairing items they collect. Tekans are very little. Uh, Tekans have very little technology that is truly original, but they can occasionally progress to the point of being spacefaring. Well, let's hope they can. Tekans are born traders, profitably selling their wares far and wide. They are also excellent miners, rapidly exploiting. Despite being fairly insular, they are very peaceful and make very loyal allies. And we're going to make use of that should you wish to defriend them. Befriend them! Tekans are semi-nomadic. While some live in permanent settlements, many prefer to live in temporary camps. They are they do migrate quite a bit, uh, periodically migrating to new locations. The nomadic Tekan tribes are obsessed with hunting the Bakdur, also known as the Sand Slug. Wow, that sounds appetizing. As the herds of Bakdurs uh, migrate across the sandy deserts. The Tekan camps follow them. Tekans inhabit the vast desert wastelands of sandy desert, rocky desert, and desert savanna planets. Okay, uh, let's now get into what's really important, which is what bonuses we get. They are negative 10 aggression. Okay, negative 10 caution. They're neutral dependability. Okay, reproduction rate. Uh, we are reproducing out here, these little rodents. Uh, migration technology or tendency, I'm sorry, plus 30. They are adventurers. Assimilation rate plus 20. They are compliant. Okay. Colonization modifiers. We're not very good where there's water or savanna, something like that. We are looking for desert planets. Continental, marshy, ocean, we get negatives there. Sandy desert, plus 30. That is our sweet spot in the sandy desert. Forest, grasslands, not so great. Rocky deserts, pretty good. Desert savanna, plus 25%. So sandy desert's the best, desert savanna's next. We don't like ocean and we don't like fields, forests, that kind of thing. Um, sandy desert, so that's our best one. It has to be of minimum quality of 40% for us to colonize there. Okay, now here, uh, these are our special traits, right? Mining rate, plus 20. Damage control, plus 10. Repair rate, plus 10. Trade income, plus 10. And ship construction speed, plus 10. That's the big one, right? We are going to go out and try to get as many resources as we can and mine them. Our feelings toward other races, we do not like the Hakonish or the Mordalins at all. We also don't like the Baskara. So, uh, you know, three of the seven main civilizations in this game, we do not like. Now, nobody likes the Dayut, uh, and that's negative 50. Uh, what else? Let's see what we are again with Octarians and humans, negative 20, that's actually pretty damn good. And we're going to try to ally with them in the early to mid game uh, to let them fight our wars for us or trade techs with us. Our preferred governments are the Mercantile Guild and Monarchy. Now, I've gone back and forth on this. If we pick Mercantile Guild, it is the only government type that allows us to do something special. OK, uh, now they all have their special uh, abilities, but the Mercantile Guild can actually manually control mining ships. OK, so there's mining stations that every civilization or race has uh, that are, you know, permanent static mining locations all right but then you also have mining ships now usually that's part of the civilian economy you don't have any control over them if you pick mercantile guild you do so i went back and forth should we do monarchy or mercantile guild i think i am going to do mercantile guild because nobody else that's streaming this game will do that and also we can always turn them to auto if we want to so there's no downside in picking it really allowed governments republic mercantile democracy so we could do some military dictatorship if we wanted to but we're going to pick mercantile guild because we're really going to get some bonuses for that and you'll see that here in uh, government type here in a minute default in infantry is called a trapper group they are very weak we have the weakest infantry in the game both defense and attack they're the smallest in size 
And uh, no pun intended. I mean, I mean, in numbers, in numbers. Uh, okay, so we are going to pick the Tekken. On we go. Right now, this is called the Axe Supremacy, because that's what I called the Let's Play tutorial. We're going to call this the Teak Talk Ascendancy. Did I spell that right? I hope so. If not, I'll change it later. But we're going to be the Teak Talks. Uh, Empire Flag, I like this brown since we like the desert. That looks good to me. Now then, government type. You can see a Republic, you know, all the stuff here for a Republic. If we go to Mercantile Guild, what does this give us? Well, we're negative 10 counter espionage, and I guess maybe we should read about this first. Mercantile Guild governments are highly focused towards commerce, trade, and industry. Well, that's what we're trying to do here. The ruling structure is often loose and informal. A collection of leading members of the business community make key decisions that affect all citizens. What is this? The United States? Mercantile Guilds generally allow a high degree of freedom and autonomy to their citizens. Basic rights and liberties are guaranteed guaranteed by a simple set of laws that can apply to many situations. Entrepreneurial activity is very common, creating a dynamic business environment where high levels of wealth are generated quickly. Well, that's what I like. Okay. Mercantile Guild, counter espionage. People are going to be able to do espionage against us easier. Uh, the reason is we're, we're kind of you know, highly informal when it comes to government, right? Loose and informal. We don't have a strong hand that's out there looking for espionage. So we're going to be negative 10 there. But we're going to be plus 20 diplomacy. People want to get on our good side, right? We're doing commerce. We're free traders. We're Adam Smith out here. Um, and so we get a plus 20 diplomacy. So that kind of goes into our strategy here. We get a plus five on research, which is important. Uh, for us, construction, we get a plus 20. Now, our happiness and corruption are actually negative here. I don't like that, but you got to give a little to get a little. Our mining rate is even higher, so it's going to be a plus 30 altogether. Ship maintenance gets another plus 10. Facility plus 10. Trade income, another plus 30. That gives us a plus 40 total, and colony income goes up. Special abilities can manually control mining ships. Okay, so the other preferred one is monarchy, and we could look through here, but really monarchy then is kind of the strong hand, war weariness, things like that. We do get some more tourism income, troop maintenance, that kind of stuff, but I really like the Mercantile Guild for the Tekken, and so we're going to do that, and we're going to have some real bonuses going on. Home system, we're just going to do normal. Expansion, starting. Tech level, pre-warp, starting location, random. They can put us out there anywhere. Other empires, auto-generate empires on, and we're going to say 12 of those. Perfect. That's all the default. I'm not going to go through here and pick. Victory conditions. Okay, we've got the general ones on, and we're going to have to see what our uh, race-specific ones are. So we've got that on. We don't know what they are yet, but we'll see them here in shortly. Victory threshold, 70%. Start date years off. Time limit years off. We're just going to get going, and as long as it takes to win this game, we're going to do it. We want story events, race-specific story events, and colony events. That all looks good, and let's start the game. And I will get to the comments here in a minute, even if I can't see them. Uh, right now, but well, that that would be uh, interesting if I can't see them, but I will uh, get out of my screen here so I can come see what the heck is going on. There we go. Now I can see you guys. Uh, yeah, okay, hold on here. Because um, now I, can, I figured out how to do the comments this way. Um, Aka Gorti, you're new to me. How are you? Uh, they wash in their dung, maybe. Well, yeah, that's possible that we are going to wash in our dung. And I, I do have a small puppy, so I do know how that works. Uh, <laughs> the ascendancy. Yeah, I spelled it right, didn't I? Or did I did I put an E there? I think I spelled it right. A-S-C-E-N-D-A-N. Dancy at the end. I, I'd say mercantile. Yeah, me too, Jared. That's what we're going to do. I like it. All right, back to the game here. Uh, ascend. Oh, it's an A? Ascendancy. 
okay, well, well, you can rename things very easily here. Our faction is known as the TikTok Ascendancy. Our government is the Mercantile Guild. We are the Teakin. Teakin have natural skills and mining rate, damage control, repair rate, trade income, ship construction speed. Our leader is Queaky Odici. <laughs> I like this guy already. What's up, Queaky? Skilled in high-tech research, ship construction speed, and colony happiness. Well, that's good. That's a good leader. Our home colony is April Wowen. Oh, gosh. They had to give me a hard one, didn't they? I may just make that Teak 1. Just so I, you know, I don't have to keep saying Ipri Wowen every time. A sandy desert planet in the Tebru system. Nearby is the gas giant planet Tebru 4. Also nearby is the continental moon Erdesehiv. Sure. Let's get started. Okay, and in we come to T-Brew, the T-Brew system. Oh, look at that nice desert planet. Wow, that's beautiful. And let's pause immediately. Pause. Yeah, there we go. Okay, first of all, where can I rename the TikTok Ascendancy? Well, we'll get there. Um, I think I can do it right up here. Oh, no, I, I would really be embarrassed if I have to play this whole game with this uh, being, I'm going to look this, hold on, hold on, now you've got me, sorry, I just, I've got to make sure, I not that I would ever doubt one of you guys, but man, that looks so right to me, ascending, gosh darn it, you're right. Okay, well, I'll, I'll fix that. I'll figure out how. Um, let's get off of our empire here. I can't rename it from there. You can rename literally everything in this game. So, of course, I won't be able to do it here. Uh, let's read here. Wander time come again. But before we do that, let's just kind of scoot out here. Uh, and Oh, wow. We've got a lot of planets here at Tabru. And then when we come out, okay, we're all, all the way out on a spiral uh, out to the southwest from the center of the galaxy. We're, I, I hate getting started at the edges in some ways. In one way, it's good uh, because we are the Teakin, te because they're not going to be very warlike, and so we have a natural defense right here, right? We only have to worry about right here, uh, whereas if we're here, everybody could attack us from every direction. Uh, that being said, it makes it harder to expand faster, but okay, we'll deal with it. In the ancient Tinket worldship ruins, we have made a curious discovery. We Tinkins are born to wander. For generations, we have traveled this world hunting Bactur, always seeking what is new and unfamiliar, never staying in one place for long. Yet this world is finite, and our legends tell us of a time centuries past when we wandered the stars, taking for ourselves whatever we could find. The stories rec uh, recount a time of great upheaval. Now, there's a whole story behind this game, right? And as we discover things, the story will unfold. Rather than fight, they wisely chose to hide on this world where they survived, though at a cost of their accumulated wealth. The remnants of ancient machines have been found on this world. Go So on and so forth. I'll let you read this when you start the game. They're all kind of the same. Um, we have found technology that has advanced our understanding of early warp field experiments. We have found technology that has advanced our understanding of research labs. Well, that's great. These ruins provide the following colony bonuses. Plus four colony development. Plus eight recruited armor strength. Plus six sensor research. And plus seven scenery. Okay, let's go down to where we are. Okay, that's Iproan. There it is. We haven't hit play yet. Let's call this actually, we're going to call this Teak 1. Uh, just so I know that this is the home planet, it will always be Teak 1. If I go here, can I? why can't I change this damn name? It's going to drive me crazy. I know there's a place we could do it. Uh, but for now, we're the Ascendancy. Uh, okay, dismiss. Uh, so let's get out of that. And message, new leader appears. So let's get going with the game here. And like I said, we're going to play this on normal speed. We've got our, uh, is this the construction ship? What is this? This is called the Cautious Bootlegger. It says it's a shipyard all in on its own, but I think that's a construction ship. We'll have to go look. Uh, then we have... The Explorer, Explorer, the Rusty Subterfuge. What a name. And then we have the Broken Guide over here. That's an ore hauler. Okay, so yeah, that is a construction ship. 
uh, CST. That should have let me know. CST-1, the cautious bootlegger, it is now under construction. Our scout ship is under construction. It's at 62%. Let's go up to research projects. Is the first thing you want to do. We've got torpedo weapons, ground combat, space reactors. Early warp field experiments is obviously going to be number one. But look how far along here we are. We got a really nice bonus there. So let's cue that up. Then energy deflectors should always be number two. That's defensiveness. Then they, they say armor plating. I actually like to do research projects next, but I'm going to leave that for now. So now we've got our research, two of those queued. We've got a really nice looking home planet. If we look at Teak 1, we're at 56% uh, development. That looks good. We have two unknown items present. We will figure those out soon enough. What's in the queue? It's just the ships we see out here. We do have nine Empire bonuses here. And you can see what all of our bonuses are and why they are. And we have four location bonuses that we read about here at the Teak. Uh, I'll call it the Teak. <laughs> teak 1. Um, new leader appears. Okay, so here's our leader. Let's check him out. Queeky Odici. <laughs> That's going to crack me up every time. I'm sorry. Queeky Odici. That, what, a, what a great name. Queeky is generous. Um, okay, that gives us our colony happiness but it also gives us our colony corruption reductions. Not good uh, because he's too nice, essentially. I am going to turn him to manual, but he's already starting to get some of these skills, many of them from the traits, but he's also got high-tech research. Okay, we're going to keep him on manual, and that is fine. Now we'll dismiss that. Unknown items. Our exploration has detected unknown items at Ipra Wowan. Now that is that uh, moon. So let's just kind of see our local area here. This is our home. Oh, it is a moon. Gosh darn it. I hate what they always start you on moons, for God's sakes. So actually, I want this to be, we'll call this the Teak Moon, because otherwise I'm going to get confused. Uh, teak Home Moon. Well, that's, that's about as easy as it gets. Tink home moon. Um, okay. Wow, you saw our ground forces there, right? Those always crack me up. Where did that go? There they are. Our troops. Look at them. Uh, a raid across the moon. Okay, so this is the planet Tebru 4. It seems like in this game, they love to have you start on a moon around a gas giant. It's also got a second moon over here and i'm going to say uh so this is tebru 4 let's just call this something else because otherwise oh i can't rename it until we discover or we survey it okay that's fine um dismiss this anything else we want to do at the start not really we could look at our economy oh well, let's go down the preferences. Let's just make sure all of our preferences are good. Preset configuration, they're calling it custom. So what I like to do is I like to do suggest and then we'll start everything else. So always on suggest, not suggest and execute, always on suggest and auto. Now, once we get going, we'll start clicking things over to manual, but I don't want something to slip between the cracks because I forgot that it's on manual. But Anything that we can do suggest, we're going to do that. Tax rates, stock levels, funding levels, we'll start all of those on auto. Now, eventually, we will take control of those. But suggest, manual, ship and base design, auto. Okay, so research, crash research, yes. We want those on manual. Oh, that reminds me. We've got to do something else. Character locations and intelligence missions, I want those on manual. All suggest, troop recruitments, auto, fleet, fleet postures, and fleet management, all on manual. Okay, that looks great. Uh, that all looks fine. Prompts, colonization, suggest, minimum suitability, that's fine. Tax rates, let's leave most of this on auto at the start or suggest, including funding levels, which are very important, but we'll get there. Uh, these target approval ratings will also deal with that. Ship and base not design, I like to leave that auto in the early game before we have very many components. That way these things you know, essentially retrofit automatically as we get things. Ship construction, base construction, all of those on suggest. Uh, prioritize state ships, yes. New military ships are manually controlled. 
as are other state ships. We want them to be manually controlled when they come out of the space dock. Everything on normal there, that's fine. Diplomacy, all suggest. Military, suggest. This is on 1.5. I'm going to do it on 1. We're not going to be attack overmatch factor. Um, we, when it's evaluating whether to attack something, we don't want to do it, you know, up here. We want to be very unwarlike. How about that? Uh, upgrade enlisted. Yes. So it's going to automatically upgrade those ships that I was talking about. Yep, that all looks fine. Troops. Auto, fleet, manual, research, manual, and intelligence missions, manual. Okay, so we got our preferences, and we'll be changing those as we go along. Uh, but I do want to go back up here to research and see, can we do a crash? Yes, that's what I thought. I think in the early game here, you should crash research everything. Uh, why wouldn't you? I mean, you've got plenty of credits and you're going to. You may as well double the speed of your research if they're going to allow you to do that. Um, are you sure you want to play 3750 credits? Yes, I am. So let's crash research that. And early energy deflectors, we're going to want to crash that when it starts doing that. So that's second in the queue now. Excellent. Okay, exit research. Uh, unexplored, can't change the name. Teak home moon. Okay, now I'll never forget to say it's a home moon. Sure, you know better than that. We're at Tebru 4. Let's scoop back. Okay, we're not going to do anything until we get warp drives, but we're actually going to get warp drives really fast. And so let's go here and then we'll go look at our exploration ship down here. Uh, exploration ships, the rusty subterfuge. We've got that on manual. That's cool. There it is. We have now constructed that. So we're going to get that going. Let's go to resources and look at mining ships. That's being built right now. Construction ships. There we are. The cautious bootlegger. We've got all of those on manual. And that's what I want. Uh, this hasn't been built yet, uh, but they're all on manual. A new exploration ship is completed. Excellent. Build base. Build the small spaceport at the Teak Home Moon for 9,946 credits. Uh, yeah, we don't have an abandoned base here, which is unlike the Actarians, which do. So we're going to go ahead and build that. You can see we've got a positive cash flow. That's fine. We start with 2 billion Teaks, Teakins, I should call them, one colony, and we're off. Go see if I'm missing something. Uh, Queaky. <laughs> yes, it is the UK spelling. Uh, exactly, Truth. Thank you. Thank you, Truth, for that. Uh, I, that's what I'm saying. Why can't I rename my empire? It's going to be very embarrassing. Hey, Grimald. Hello from Russia. Well, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, we're just clicking along here. We're going to have to wait until we get warp drives to really do much. But, and that's why some people start where you already have warp. But as you can see, we're starting to build this base. Now, like I said, when we played the Actarians, both in the preview gameplay and in our Let's Play tutorial, we had a base that was... Uh, from a prior time, right? And uh, we were able to just rebuild that. Here we had to spend money to build one. Okay. Um... I just want to make sure the exploration ship, let's go to the rusty subterfuge. There it is. It's just waiting to get a warp drive. So, you know, we got to get up to 100%. Once we have that, we'll turn it into uh, or have it retrofit and we'll finally start scouting. We also want to go to our home moon here until this space station's built and we could queue up some ships. Uh, construction ships building now. Small spaceport is next. Small freighter, small freighter, mining ship. Okay, we uh, did prioritize state ships. And so if we want to build more exploration ships or more construction ships, we should get that going. And I think we do. We're going to want to be building here, build an ore hauler, build an escort, build a construction ship, or build an exploration ship for 3,400 credits. All right, let's get a second exploration ship uh, ready to go and let's get a eh, I don't want to get too carried away here I do not want to go to negative cash flow so 
let's just wait it out. Uh, you know, as long as we have two or three exploration ships when we get the warp drives, that'll be fine. As a matter of fact, I may build a third one. That's a little cheaper. 3,400. Well, I guess, nope, it's not actually a little cheaper. But we're going to need more construction ships, obviously. But let's build another explorer. Now we've gone a little negative in the cash flow because we're having to maintain those ships. And it's, it's going to show that as negative. But we got we got to get out and exploring. We'll be all right. If you go a little neg negative, they can raise the tax rate. It'll be okay. We'll we'll survive. Uh, I've done plenty of finance in my life. We'll figure it out. We'll borrow the money, right? Or let's just print it. <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, all right, we're up to 61%. I think I'll pop this up to times two just for this. And then after this, we'll always be at times one. But until we get the warp drive, there's not really much we're going to be able to do. The rusty subterfuge, you know, we could say... Uh, check out the teak home moon. Well, it's just going to refuel, right? It, and it's already got all the fuel. We, we do the exploration of this. Oh, we've got a new general. New general appears. A new general named Dexy Losit has appeared at the teak home moon. Well, let's show me Dexy. <laughs> I love these. Dexy, Dexy, and Queaky. Uh, they've got great names. This is why I should always be the Teakins. Okay, we don't know anything about him yet. I mean, it's good to have a general. Actually, I'll turn him on manual because there's or uh, automatic. I mean, because there's nowhere else for him to go. We've only got troops on the Teak home moon, so we're just gonna leave it there. And we do now have a second character. All right, the warp drives a clicking. Let's go over here and look at our money situation. Oh, we've got a discovery at the Teak Home Moon. So see, we're automatically exploring this. You don't have to do an exploration ship to do your home moon. We have discovered new resources. Silicon is used in electronic uh, components. Okay. And if we click on the planet now, we can see silicon 12% here that's not great but we also have a salia a salia is a purple gemstone used in weapons components so that's what we have here at the teak home world okay you can see our cash flow is getting a little bit better it's fine i mean i would rather have another exploration ship and let this just be a little bit negative we're not going to go all the way negative uh certainly so this will click down as our population goes up uh, by the way, our happiness is plus four. We enjoy living in our empire's capital, the high quality environment. Is that right? On a sandy moon? Okay, sure. We're mostly undeveloped and our tax rate is too high. Very high corruption is also uh, a negative factor, right? Our tax rate's only 12%. Good Lord, what do these people want? I wish that was California's tax rate. Uh, my gosh, I'm going to move to the Teak Home Moon. Uh, we've now explored. It's completely explored. We're showing it at ex exploration level of six. We're at 76 percent there. Uh, again, we got to get that colony development up. That'll help happiness. Uh, colony suitability. It's at it's 52 percent. That's good. 77 percent. Let's click that up even faster. Times four till we get the warp. Then we got a decision of what we want to do second, right? And let's back off here, see if we've seen anything else. Not really. Nothing else is going to be going on this early. Nobody has warp drives. so. And you can see all of the uh, drones coming out from the plant or the moon to build our spaceport here. Nice looking spaceport. Now we're only negative 27 cash flow as we continue to do more and more. Oh, we just got a little bonus there. Somebody, that would be because civilians asked us to build ships for them. And we got a nice bonus income there. And we can look at that. If we look at our economy, did we get some bonus income? Shipbuilding, 5,104. That's why that jumped up very quickly. Now we're at 90%. Spaceport constructed. We have constructed a spaceport. This large orbital base serves as a shipyard, allowing us to build many different types of starships. Our new spaceport also provides a hub for trade and commerce. Freighters will deliver cargo here, and ships can refuel here. As our technology progresses, we should upgrade our space with other capabilities, shields and weapons for defense, research labs, sensors, and more. Okay, excellent.
So you can see it here. It is completely built up, and they have asked us to start building. Oh, some of the building went over here to the spaceport. That's fine. Uh, dismiss. We're at 94%. Let's start to slow that down. So now we're at times two. And our cash flow is now positive, and we did get that big bonus because civilians are asking us to build ships. Okay, let's go down to, well, when, when this gets to 99, it's going to tell us we can upgrade some ships, I think. 16 more days, let's see. 98, 99. One hundred. We now have a skip drive. Okay. Hyperspace technology discovered. Hyperspace technology discovered. Yep, I just read that. Using the ancient knowledge recovered from our earlier exploration, we have developed our first primitive hyperdrive. This breakthrough technology allows our starships to travel faster than light. This momentous discovery means that we can quickly traverse our own solar system, exploring and expanding. We should quickly exploit this, and indeed we do, or we will, and we are going to pause that. And why are we going to pause that? Well, we're going to go to our exploration ships right here. So we've got the rusty subterfuge. We're going to click on that, and it's already retrofitting. You can see this, retrofit at the Teak Home Moon Spaceport. That's because we have upgrades on automatic, okay? This uh, cannot retrofit until current construction is done. It's only 55% built. When it's built, it will have the uh, warp drive, okay? So we've got that, dismiss, fantastic. And whenever you get a major technology like that, you get a new scientist. Recent events, research breakthrough have produced a new scientist, Oro Hanari. Okay, Roro or Oro, welcome. Let's go to our characters. Queeky, Dexy. I, I don't like the fact our general's named Lose It. Dexy Lose It. I, I don't like that. Uh, you can see he's already getting some skills. Our leader has also gotten a few other skills here. Hyperdrive research, plus 4%. That's nice. The scientist, we're going to leave him on automatic for now. He cannot go anywhere yet until we build a research lab. Well, we can't research those yet. We want to do early energy deflectors so we have some defense uh, if something attacks us. So not not a whole lot to do there. What we're going to do is get down here times two, and you can see our exploration ship. Nope, that's a transport ship. Let's zoom around here. You can see the docks. Uh, let's go back to our exploration ships. Rusty subterfuge. He'll be the first one out, and so he's going to come into the spaceport to retrofit. Uh, we have a new exploration ship completed. Show me. Oh, there he goes. Look at him. He's all excited to get going here. Uh, leave the construction yard. And if we zoom back, you can see how far he can jump. I don't think he's retrofitted, and he's not. They should have built him, gosh darn it, with retrofit. Now, nope, that's just how it works. It was already being constructed, so I just hit that on retrofit, so it'll go back in and get the hyperdrive. If you ever want to know if you got the latest ship, go down here, and if that's lit up or blinking, you need to retrofit. So let's do both of those. They're going to both retrofit. Where's the dubious rover? It's out here, but it's being built. It's only at 51%. Then we'll put that on retrofit uh, once its construction is finished. Um, okay, so we've got the warp drive, we're going to get these exploration ships out, and I'm going to manually control them. Look at our beautiful planet. I just like, to, I love how this game looks. Uh, to me, it makes it much more visually interesting than Stellaris, uh, just how this looks. Now, in the first game, the stuff actually rotated and, and went around the stars and stuff. Fantastic uh, visually. Uh, this one, not yet. Not yet, although they say that may happen. We shall see. Still got to figure out how to rename the Teak Ascendancy. It's driving me wild. Uh, game menu. Can I do it there? No, probably not. Oh, my. Uh, new exploration ship completed. Show me. All right, he's out here. Let's see how far he can jump, and you can tell if he's got the warp drive or not. He, no, he does not. 
And so he already retrofitting. Okay, since we had that on automatic, he's already retrofitting. So they're just got to queue up here uh, and wait. You can see we've got all kinds of drones coming in and out of the spaceport. You can see them buzzing around here. Now, the Actarians have a bigger cargo bay here. And so we, we're only one ship at a time on each side, one and one of the other exploration ships retrofit now the rusty scepter fuge is out and now when we zoom back you can see how far he can go he could jump all the way out of our system right so the first place and i'm going to manually control this for now the first place we want to go is tebru 4 tebru 4 is right over here so rusty scepter fuge survey uh tebru 4 the Tebru Aspiration, let's go to that. Can that jump yet? Yep, that can jump. And we're going to want that to do the other moon that's around Tebru 4. So let's do that. That's Urtachihef. Sure, I should just call it other moon. And we've now had our first hyper jump. Ah, crap. I always like to see that the first time. Uh, where is the rusty subterfuge? He's out at Tebru 4. Oh, okay, let's just dismiss that. Now it's telling us build two more exploration ships for 5,458 credits. We're getting a little bonus building them in bulk. I'm for that. Uh, is that true? Do I want to build that many? Probably not. Actually, I'm just going to build one more. So let's go back to our home moon and go out to our spaceport and say build one more exploration ship. Go to construction there. Ore hauler, escort, construction ship, exploration ship. So let's build one more of those. And then we're going to need construction ships. One and two. Let's get those going. Now we spent a lot of money, but we've got a really nice positive cash flow now. Let's go back to the exploration ships. You can see the ones that are... Oh, did I already... Oh, whoa, whoa. It looks like it's going to be building three more. I do not want that. The humble bargain scuttle that stop yeah i do not want that scuttle ship yes yes uh we don't want to build that many five is good certainly okay let's uh pause here for a second as we're moving around along at times two, I guess early game, that makes sense. We have discovered at Tebru 4, and you can see it lit up here when we discovered it, uh, Krypton. It's an inert green gas. We have discovered Argon, which is yellow, and we have discovered, oh, nice, uh, hidden items. Well, that's great. The only bad news here is we did not discover Kazlon. Kazlon is your main fuel. So that is not good, but we do get a bonus here for industrial research because of unknown items. I would have rather found Kazlon, to be honest with you, but we can build a research lab up out there and get bonuses. So the rusty subterfuge is here at Tebru 4. It is still going. We now have the Tebru Aspiration out here at, I'm going to rename that. Oh, it's not going to let me rename that moon. Now, I thought you could rename everything in this game, but now I've got two things that we can't rename. Uh, although I am going to figure out how to do that. You know I will. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to look at. Victory Conditions. Can I rename it there? Uh, <laughs> I tried. Tick talk ascendancy okay uh economy empires these are our victory conditions and we have to have three of the four to win that's why that victory threshold is 70 percent empires private economy generates 75 percent of the galaxy total well we're definitely going for that um our private economy generates six percent of the galaxy total huh uh, oh, as of right now, I got it. Okay, so we're trying to get to 75. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so it shows you exactly where you are right then. Uh, control 75% of the galaxy's population. We currently have 7%. Territory, 75%. We control 7%. Okay, but what I really wanted to look at is the Tekken race victory conditions. Start the fewest wars in the galaxy. I think we can do that. Earn the most trade income. I think we can do that. Gain the most research and tech from salvage. Maybe. Have the most non-aggression packs. I think we can do that. And destroy the most Vorticars. We don't even know what Vorticars are. 
uh, but we'll try to do that. Okay, uh, let's get going. So I cannot rename that moon, for goodness sake. Okay, and now, but at that moon, we did make a d discoveries. We found steel. We found uh, a luxury item. That's good. Garaxian nectar. Done. We found polymers. And we found carbonite. Excellent. Okay, so that was really nice find. And if we go look at that moon now, let's see the abundance. Oh, yeah, that's great. Carbonite, 89. Uh, polymers, 48. Graxian nectar, which gives us plus two colony development, plus one population growth, and plus two plague curing. What is COVID uh, expanded this far? What's going on? Plus two, and then we got a lot of steel there. Okay, well, that reminds me of something else we should do, which is go to our um, mining ships. Now, we can control these, okay? And so I already like what they're doing here. Mine Tebru 4, Mine Tebru 4. We're also going to want to build a mining station out here. Now, normally when you play the game, you cannot control these. Is the broken guide built? No, it is not. Okay, new mining locations. We can see that. Tebru 4. Build a mining station here for 6,448 credits. We are going to turn that on. Uh, but let's go to our construction ships. The cautious bootlegger is built. It's the first one built. I've got it on manual. And so because of that, let's go to auto build mining stations. And he will then go out here to Tebro, Tebru 4. Do I want to do it that way? No. Let's manually control it to start with. To start with. And let's take the cautious bootlegger back up and right click on Tebru 4 and build MS1 or mining station 1 at Tebru 4. Excellent. Now how far are we along here? 0%, 0%. Okay. Um, I think that's good. Our ship tactics should be set up pretty well and let's go ahead and hit play and we'll see him jump over here and build a mining station eventually. We also have the rusty sub subterfuge that's manual he is surveying tebru 4 again and then i'm going to have him auto explore is that true no i'm not i'm going to have him do tebru 4 this is an ore hauler this is an ore hauler excellent so they're out here waiting for ore to be done and then let's go look at our other exploration ships and let's pause because we got to get these guys going so Survey Tebru 4, Dubious Rover. Now, the reason I'm doing these manually at first is because I want them to go to the biggest uh, bodies in our system. So and then I'm going to do the Humble Bargain. Is the Humble Bargain still under construction? It is. Rusty Subterfuge. The Tebru Aspiration can still go. Let's have him go to this moon. All right. So now we've got those two going. The bargain's at 60%, Tebru 4. Okay, we've got all of those set up well. Let's go back to our construction ships. Okay, that all looks good, and we can hit play. I'm going to keep this on times two for now. Seems to be fine. You know, but we're going to want to get out here to the main bodies, and we'll go over here to Tebru. And you can see we're already starting to build the mining station around Tebru 4. Uh, and these, these ore haulers will start to pick up from the mining station and take them back to our spaceport, right? Next, new exploration ship is completed. Okay, show me. Now we've got five survey leaving construction yard. So we'll wait till it does that. Do, 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 do. The humble bargain. Let's just put this nap. Ah, Again, I want to do the main bodies, so let's. we've done these two. Let's go out to this one, Tebru 8. It's closest to us. Let's jump out there. So Tebru 6, Tebru 8, Tebru 4. Is this one done? Nope, he's at 43%. Construction ships, we still just have the one. This, uh, these need to get going, these construction ships. We need more now. What's the, what's the hold up, guys? And you can see 
the ore hauler coming in to draw is he dropping off i believe he is he's kind of getting into a uh landing pattern there we've got a light transport there okay that's all civilian stuff now we can control the mining ships uh, but we're not doing that quite yet. What do we have out here? Ore hauler. They're waiting. Mining station constructed. The construction of our first mining station allows us to gather large quantities of valuable resources for use in powering the economy. Our freighters will soon begin traveling to this new mining station and returning its resources. Again, it does that automatically. Um, so this is done. Yep, it is. So now we can take uh, the construction ship. Okay, so let's dismiss that and go to pause. We can take this construction ship. Is he still docked there? He is. Okay, we can't do anything with it until he undocks. Yep. That's the construction ship. He's still kind of building this. We've got to wait for him to back up, back that thing up. Uh, as a matter of fact, there he is. Okay, let's have him then go to this other moon and start to build a mining station there. Build MS-1 there. Discovery at Tebru 4. There is Kazlon. That's what we needed at Tebru 4. And... That just goes to show you sometimes there are more resources at a place and the longer you look at it, the better it is. That's Tebru 6, that's Tebru 4. And so we just discovered that a fourth resource, right? Argon, well, it's not showing it yet, but it said that we discovered it. Let's hope that's true. The Gallant Scheme is a new construction ship. It's only at 45%. When that gets built, we're gonna send it, you know, maybe down here. Uh, let's look at our exploration ships, dubious rover. Tell you what, this one, I'm going to set that to auto explore. So off he goes, he can do his thing. The rusty subterfuge, let's send that to Tebru 3. The smiling solace, let's send that to Tebru 2. All right. And then this is doing survey Incas. What'd you call me? Uh, okay. Okay. That all looks good, and we'll go back to our construction ships. We do have a new one completed, so that's awesome. So now we'll have two construction ships. Uh, what do we have at Tebru 6? We don't see any resources there? Really? All right, we've got a couple of moons around here. We've also got Tebru 8 that we're looking at here. We're showing no resources now. That does not mean they're not out there. That's just what we're showing now. Um... Let's look uh, for mining, our mining locations now. You can see Tebru 4 mining station is really getting a lot of stuff. The Erdeshehef, or however the heck we pronounce that, that's great. That's a great one. So we're building that one right now. The Teak Home Moon, we don't have a whole lot there, uh, but it, oh well. Uh, what can you do? Now we've got the Humble Bargain. I'm also going to send the Humble Bargain out to Tebru 5. Let's do that. Okay, survey, un okay, this one's now out at like uh, various asteroids and stuff. That's why I always do the big ones manually first. I don't think we've gone here yet, and this is likely where the pirates are. New spy appears. We have a new spy. Okay, let's go check this guy out. Uh, his name is Karg, Karb Yablik. Let's show me. And Carb, we don't know what his uh, various uh, traits are yet. But mission type, we obviously are going to do counterintelligence. That's all we can do now. Um, time to complete until canceled. Let's assign the mission. Okay. I'm going to control him manually. Let's look at our other characters. We can't put the scientist onto a research lab yet because we've got to research research labs. Did that make sense? Sure it did. Uh, play. Let's make sure our construction ships are doing something. Uh, let's turn this to auto build mining stations. Okay. And then this is just leaving the construction yard. For now, all we're building is mining stations anyway. Let's turn that to auto build mining stations. Um, and then if we go here to new mining locations, we can see this moon 
Let's build a mining station there. Okay, what did we find out here? A new spy appears. We already saw that. A discovery at Urpunad. Dad. Sure. Vodkal is a powerful alcoholic beverage. What is this? Poland. Made from the roots of the Vodia plant. This hardy plant grows. Okay. It provides the following bonuses. Plus three colony development. Plus one colony happiness. Excellent. Let's dismiss that. Uh, we found Jaconta Ivory. So this place has a lot of luxury goods. Uh, plus seven colony development. Okay. Tebru three. We've got uh, hidden items. Plus four percent scenery from the rings of tebru okay uh pedanthia root wow we've got a lot of luxury goods in our system that's excellent uh the quartz here is high-end electronic components okay and advisor suggestion assign this mission to build ms1 at tebru 2 let's do that okay so that one moon out here i think it's this one yeah, this has got incredible amount of stuff. Uh, plus 10 colony development and plus one colony happiness. Speaking of which, let's go back to our home moon at Tebru 4. Uh, well, that's not our home moon. Let's go to our teak home moon and see if our colony development has come up at all. It's come up plus 4% for other items. We already had that, but plus 2% from resources those are luxury goods and we got to get that developing but i think we're going to do all of that next time now let me get out of here and see if you guys are still there we need a printing press that is true grimald is here hello oh i already said hello to you in russia grimald uh welcome um <laughs> yes uh Cool. Hey, Casey. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the videos. Uh, I'm trying to teach as we go along. Sometimes that's hard and people get mad and they say, well, you messed something up. I'm like, well, I was talking too much. Uh, this is a great game. This is a great game, though. We're right on the hour mark. We have advanced about a little more than three years. I've been on times two, so that's actually quite good. Oh, before we go, though, let's build a mining station out at Incas and at Tabru 3, or at least set those up. Uh, and so we're already building there. We've, we've made a lot of progress here. Now, all just within our system, right? But we're about to get point defense or early energy deflectors. And then we'll probably do research labs before we do armor plating. Because we already know on our gas giant that we can build a research lab there because it has... Uh, this industrial research bonus and that's where you can build research labs but anyway thank you guys so much for tuning in today i am every other day at noon i'm either going to be live streaming this game or putting up a recorded video one of the two so this is going to be my other game that we stream besides war knees too so if you like this come by become a regular we'll chat every time uh, maybe I'll buy a second monitor so I can see your comments as I go. Uh, that would make everybody in the War in the East 2 stream uh, proud and happy as well. So anyway, thanks again. I'll talk to you guys. Uh, I'll have a new video of this up at the very latest uh, two days, you know, every other day. Uh, but I may want to play the game more anyway. So I may put one up tomorrow and be sneaky about it. But I'm going to be doing this every other day, whether streaming or uploading videos. And we're going to play it all the way to the end until the Teeks either take over the galaxy and make everyone smell or we get destroyed. But uh, we could hide. We're little gerbils. They can't find us. Anyway.